I know, I know, you all wanna see the CR250, but the nice thing about having two project bikes going at once is that while you're waiting on parts for one bike, you can switch it up and work on the other. So the tubes for the 250 will be back next Tuesday or Wednesday, all finished up. So we're getting really close, another week or so, and we'll be back to work on that bike. But in the meantime, we're gonna do some work on Haley's XR80. We will be powder coating the engine covers today, so stay tuned. All right, here's the plan for today. Be pulling off the engine covers, gonna be doing the flywheel cover, valve cover, clutch cover, and while I'm at it, there's a couple more things on the bike that are kind of nasty here. So I'll be powder coating the kickstand as well, the foot peg mount. Won't be doing the pegs because we got some uh, new wider pegs coming for it. Be doing the engine mount, skid plate, uh, triple clamps, come over to this side, and I think I'll be doing the brake pedal, kickstarter, and a brake rod as well. And maybe a couple other things that kind of pop up as I work on the bike. So a lot of stuff being coated today. Step one, drain the oil. All right, now don't let me forget to put oil back in this thing once we're all finished up. Now for step two, we're gonna pull everything off around the clutch cover. So the kickstarter, foot peg and mount, brake pedal, uh, brake rod, and the clutch cable. Crusty. Gonna have to get a breaker bar on this thing. All right, now with the clutch cover off. I'll need to shave all the gasket remnants off and pull everything off the clutch cupboard. Thankfully the engine looks really clean internally, no sludge or buildup anywhere. And the filter was super clean as well, so I don't think we'll need to tear into this thing at all. Now we've got a whole pile of parts off the bike to be coated. The next thing we're gonna go after is the valve cover. Looks like we're gonna have to pull the tank off for that. And then on this side, I'll be ripping off the flywheel cover and foot peg mount and kickstand as well. Kind of forgot about this cover. It's got a big chunk missing out of it, but thankfully got a new cover sitting on the shelf. So we'll go ahead and powder coat that one. Now the last thing we got to tackle is the triple clamps. Looks like they're kind of hard to get to, but in reality it's pretty simple. Just slide the forks out of the triple clamps along with the wheel and then pop the handlebars out of the upper clamps and the triple clamps basically just slide right out of the frame. All right, so here's the deal with the bottom triple clamp. The lower bearing needs to be removed before we do any type of coating. So 
So I got that popped off and I figured while I was at it, I would upgrade the steering stem bearings with this set from Tusk. So this is the old style bearing, just got a bunch of little BBs or little balls inside of a plastic cage. Really crappy setup. Now I'll show you what the upgraded setup looks like. So it's actually roller bearings with a metal cage and you have to replace the race that goes in the frame as well. So this is a lot better setup than the previous. Well, here's everything that will be coating. The next step is to clean it all up over here in the parts washer. We're all cleaned up and the next stop is the sandblaster. So inside the cabinet, I'm using 100 grit aluminum oxide media. We're all blasted up. So we're gonna drop this stuff into an acetone bath and follow that up with a preheat through the oven. Now, when you're doing powder coating, you'll need to mask off or plug areas that are sensitive to thickness. Since powder does have some buildup, and that would include the gasket surface on the inside, the hole for the kickstart seal, the dipstick hole, and the hole for the clutch arm. And then when you're all finished up masking, you wanna poke a hole in the backside. That way the heat from the oven doesn't shrink the tape and peel it off the gasket surface. Just pulled these parts out of the oven. So that means we are now ready to spray. Now, as far as powder goes and color, we'll be going with a prismatic stone black. This is the same color we used on the rims for the XR80. So let me give you guys something to think about here. So you spend all this time prepping your parts in order to powder coat them. You go through the sandblasting, soaking them in acetone, preheating them, you know, pulling them off the bike. There's a lot of steps. And if you go with a powder that isn't quite up to par, all that work is for nothing. So my advice would be to find a powder that sprays out and lays out really good and also is super durable and also fits your budget as well. So I've used powder from Eastwood. I've used powder from Powder by the Pound, many other companies. And the one that I like the most is Prismatic. Always sprays out super good. The finish is awesome and it is durable as heck. So I will drop a link down below to where you can find this exact powder. Now it's time to load up some powder into this Eastwood gun and get to spraying. You'll notice the finish is pretty chalky. It's literally just powder sitting on top of the part. So now we're ready to pop these in the oven at 400 degrees to cure them. And while you're spraying, you definitely want to garb up. So wear some gloves, wear a respirator, have an exhaust system like an exhaust fan. And I go the extra mile by wearing a Tyvek suit. Now, once the part reaches temperature, which in this case is 400 degrees, go ahead and check it with the heat gun. 420. So you're gonna give it an extra 10 minutes to really bake that powder onto the part. And one thing to keep in mind is you don't wanna be near the oven or breathe in too many of those fumes as the powder is curing. So take a step back from the oven or just leave the space completely when those parts are in there. I'm really pumped on how this black powder coat came out. Skid plate's pretty beat up, but you know what? It's a skid plate, but the powder sprayed out great. Cured smooth and not too glossy, not too flat. I think it'll look really, really good on the bike. Now what's cool about powder coat is you can double up on the coating to make it last a little longer. And that's what I did on these three parts here. They get quite a bit of wear when they're on the bike from boots, from shifting and using the brake. So I thought I'd add a little extra thickness. So how you add the second coat is when you're done spraying the first coat and curing it, you pull it out of the oven and spray the second coat while it's still hot, and then pop it back in the oven for the same amount of time to cure that second coat. Now for the foot peg mounts and front engine mount, we'll be doing a little different color here. This is called a silver bronze from Prismatic as well. All right, let's get to spraying. 
All the mounts are done, looking pretty good. So the color came out pretty much just a gray. Very basic color, but I didn't want to go over the top with the color on the frame. I think this will fit really good. Now with all the powder coating done, it is time to move on to the next batch of parts. So for this stuff, we will be doing Cerakote because of the tighter tolerances. Cerakote is a lot thinner coating than powder coating, so it works better in areas where there's splines, threads, we've got joints like on this arm, and areas where we can't have any buildup like where the forks slide through the triple clamps. Now the only areas we'll have to mask off is on the stem where the lower bearing sits right there. And then also on the clutch arm where it slides through the clutch cover. Now at this point, all the parts have been soaked in acetone and baked through the oven for the preheat process. And now we're ready to spray. So we will be going with a graphite black Cerakote on these parts, doing a lot of black on this bike. So the Cerakote turned out sweet, and at this point, we are all done with coatings for the day. We can move on to the next step with this bike. Now the first order of business is getting this clutch cover back together and on the bike. So the clutch cover is all done, turned out pretty badass. Really digging that all blacked out look. So now let's get the engine ready for the clutch cover to go on. So we're gonna make sure there's no dirt on the gasket surface. Give that a good wipe down. Can't forget this little plunger part that goes into the end of the crankshaft. Got the oil screen. Then we've got two locating pins that go on the crankcase. And it's very common for these to seize up, so I like to put some anti-seize lubricant on them. And then on the gasket surface, I like to put grease, so that way if I ever have to take this thing apart, the gasket doesn't stick and tear when I take it apart. And then also, the grease kind of helps keep that gasket into place as I'm bolting things together. And on goes the new gasket. Line it up with those locating pins, kind of tack it down to that grease, and now we're ready for this sick ass cover. Time to pop on the Kickstarter, but I've got a new rubber grip to slip on. I'm gonna use some SC1 to help slip that over. There we go, got it started. It was like wrestling a bear, but we got this thing on. Looks even better than new now. See how it looks on the bike. Heck yeah. Man, that looks fabulous. I think it'll look even better with the valve cover and flywheel cover on as well. So I thought while I had the valve cover and the flywheel cover off, might as well check the valve clearance. So I'm gonna get this thing at top dead center on the compression stroke. There's a compression stroke right there. Line up the marks. And the spec is two thousandths of an inch for both intake and exhaust. That one clears. That one looks good as well. So we are good to go. I am really digging that color. Hard to go wrong with black, huh? Once you go black, you never go back. Now there's one last thing we can do on the bike for today, and that is installing the bottom steering stem bearing. Now I've had the triple clamp sitting in the freezer overnight. That's why it looks a little frosty. I'm trying to help uh, shrink the metal a little bit so the bearing slips on easier. You absolutely do not want to forget the seal that goes underneath the bearing. Put a little bit of grease inside the bearing. You got to be quick with this before the stem heats up. And I've got a bearing installer tool. This is from Tusk. So it has these little collars that go over 
hopefully this one works. Yeah, that's barely hitting on the inner race of the bearing. So I'm gonna have to be really careful putting this thing on. So we're gonna give this thing a few love taps with the hammer and hopefully pound it right on. Gotta make sure that seal is lined up with the bearing. And then when we reach the bottom, you'll hear a different tone to the hit. So right there, that did it. Oh my God, are you that stupid? Ah, I'm an idiot. Completely spaced on greasing the bearing before I pressed it on. So I'm gonna have to grease that bearing the ghetto way. If you're dumb like me and you forgot to grease your bearing before you press it on, you can actually take the race and work the grease in that way. That race kind of acts as a press. It'll press all that grease right into the rollers of the bearing. All right, we're all greased up and ready to rip. That is gonna wrap up today's video. I appreciate you guys joining in on Cam's cooking show. That's what it felt like, however. But in the next video, Haley and I are gonna be tearing apart the XR80 completely down to the frame, powder coating the frame and swing arm, and then putting the bike all the way back together. So you wanna stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.